Man, we've been having really nice weather for January. It's unbelievable. Things are melting. Feels like spring. It's not going to stay this warm forever, but it's been really nice. Got a problem with the skid loader that I want to try to get figured out today while the weather is warm. The two-speed control is not working. Let me show you what I'm talking about. On the left joystick, this skid loader is set up where the left joystick operates all of your ground drive. So forward, reverse, left, and right. And then the right joystick is your loader. So it'd be up and down and dump and curl. So anyway, this skid loader has a two-speed, which means that when you flip this switch, your ground speed almost doubles. It shifts into a different gear and you're able to go a lot faster. Right now, no matter where we've got this switch positioned, I'm only in the low speed range and it does not go very fast at all. It's really slow and low speed. So I'm really hoping it's just the switch. I'm gonna dig into this and see if I can figure it out. I hope it's not something with the wiring in between, but first thing I'm gonna test is this switch. So let's get into it. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. All right, so the first step is to get these goofy little screws out. They've actually got like an Allen head on them. They're very small. They are a 1 16th. They look like they'd be really easy to drop. I want to make sure I don't do that. Probably never find them again. They're a pretty long machine screw. Okay. There was only two screws in there. Get that kind of opened up here. Boy, they don't give you much extra room with these wires. Everything's pretty stiff. Okay, so if any of you are not familiar with how this works, this is a multimeter or a uh, multimeter if you want to sound really stuck up. <laughs> anyway, you uh, if you want to test something for continuity, here is your uh, resistance symbol right here. I hope you can see the display. Let's see. Right now it's showing an open circuit. If I touch these two together, you'll see that it should show zero or very close to zero. And that's a measure of how many ohms of resistance you're getting. And there shouldn't be hardly any resistance at all when you touch these two together. So if I've got the one there, that means that it's not letting any power through. So if I touch these two spades, Maybe that is supposed to be the open position. So let me flip the switch to the fast speed and test across here. Okay. I am uh, getting some goofy readings here. All right, that's really weird. I'm not getting to zero ever. Oh, I see what I'm doing. Yep, whoops, I'm actually bumping. Look at that. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm bumping the other spade with this probe. So I was obviously completing the circuit that way. Okay, I'm not getting a good closed circuit no matter which way I've got the switch. And I guess that's kind of what I expected. I expected the switch would be bad. That's what I was hoping to have happen. Okay, so I just went on the computer and looked up the switch. That switch from New Holland is $76. I almost hate to buy a switch and then find out that that's not it, but it almost has to be it because I'm not getting any continuity to speak of through it, regardless of how I've got it. Okay. This might be a little bit redneck, but here's what I'm gonna do. I've got this nice jumper wire. It's got alligator clips on both ends of it. And I'm going to attempt to drive the skid loader with the handle torn apart. And I'm going to carefully attach that jumper wire across from one spade to the other so that I can make a good closed circuit and see if it'll shift into high range. 
I hope it does. If it does, obviously that means that the switch is bad. I can get a new switch and fix this problem. Let's hope that's all it is. Once in a while, it pays to be a redneck. This looks ridiculous, but I think I have it diagnosed. I think I can confidently purchase a new switch, $76, and uh, put that baby in and we'll be back in business. Well, I got it. Here's the switch, Case New Holland. One dinky little switch about the size of my thumb. Fancy little rabbit and turtle painted on it. 55.75, what a steal of a deal. Wow. The most expensive toggle switch I've ever seen. Well, we got the switch installed and not a minute too soon because we got some snow. We also picked up a pair of tire chains for this thing because the tires are quite bald. Well, it seems like there's always something to fix and uh, I'm in the semi right now. I'm going to be replacing a couple of things in the dash. Not really critical things, but you just find after a while that if you don't kind of keep on top of the equipment repairs, you just kind of put things off and, oh, that's a little thing, that's a little thing, that's not important, that's a little thing, that can wait, and suddenly you've got a big pile of stuff that ain't right. So here's what I'm doing today. If I turn the lights on, you may or may not be able to tell but you notice there's no light coming on in that air gauge right here. The light bulb is burnt out. And also, you can see we've got these little lighted indicators for the engine brake. And uh, when you turn the lights on, they kind of light up and says four cylinders and engine brake. And this is supposed to say two cylinders, but the little clip that's supposed to hold it into the dash is broken. I can also hear a very slight... Can you hear that? I can hear a very slight air leak in the dash. And uh, I have a suspicion that it's where the hose goes into one of these gauges so we're about to find out what the inside of a freightliner dash looks like i've never done this before so how hard can it be right all right if you get right in here you can see that the uh, construction here is extremely simple there's just these star bit screws and it looks like there's four of them on this dash panel that are going to hold this piece in and then one two three four five yeah, five on this bigger one over here. So we'll see what we find behind them. Oh yeah, you hear that? How hard can it be, right? So these air hoses go into these little shark bite fittings where you basically, you can just push this little ring in and then pull the hose out and it's got teeth in there. You can cut the hose off so you have a nice new fresh area of the hose to shove in there, shove it back in. I've done that with both of these and they are still leaking. I'm so frustrated. Can't stand the sound of leaking air in the dash. Whatever. I'm at my wits end with these airlines. I don't know what to... I may just have to replace the fitting. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe there's a little rubber thing in there or something that's no longer sealing. Okay, this is pretty much what I thought we had going on. This is just like a ribbon light and that's supposed to sit right in this hole here. Got these little clips like this that just sit through the dash and then hold that up against the back of the dash, that little ribbon light, and then they kind of form an outline around it on the front. Okay, it sits in there like that. So now the trick is just to get the little ribbon light to slide into the back of it. This is one of my biggest frustrations when working on anything 
with wiring, especially in a dash. There's just not enough wire and not enough room. I can't pull this out more than an inch or two and I can't get my hands in behind it. Look at how that turned out. No more unsightly hole in the dash. I like that. Let's see if it lights up. You know what? They do light up. Like if I was hauling corn in the dark, I would be able to see that pretty well. Well, I decided after hearing from a few of you on Instagram that I would just go ahead and replace the fittings to get this air leak to stop. The local parts store didn't have exactly what I wanted. They had the right shark bite fitting, but it was only in a male 90 degree. So we had to hook it up to this uh, female coupler to uh, make it a female 90 degree. Here's what the original fitting actually looked like. This end has an O-ring in it, I've been told, and that's what actually failed to cause that air leak. That is going to thread on there nicely. Down and to the right is how they were facing before, so that's how they're facing again now. Okay. This should just go in this slot and then push in and rotate a little bit. I think that's how it's supposed to be, isn't it? Right there, that seems good. It looks just like the other one. These things are so hard to get back in. Okay, I know I made that look really easy, but Okay, that's good, that looks good. All right, the moment of truth is here. It's time to try to connect these air fittings. Boy, that one seems like it went in really nice. So does that one. Now I'm gonna be really disappointed if these leak. I think as long as everything's gonna fit back in here properly, which it looks like it is, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that unhooked until I start it up and get the air pumped all the way up and make sure that I'm not gonna hear any leaks. Wow, check it out, look at this. Look at all these lights that work. My air gauges have lights now. I don't know, this is a new bulb too. I don't know why it doesn't look as bright as this one, but anyway, it just doesn't. I also had to replace the light in the water temperature gauge. Boy, it's really nice to have them all lit up. That is sweet. Okay, we've got our air up, so let's shut it off and check for leaks. I hear a leak. I hear a leak. It's not coming from my new fittings though. Oh boy. <laughs> it's coming from this mess of airlines down here. I don't even know if I can replace those fittings without replacing that whole block of fittings. Of course, it's the little one. Why is it always the little one? Wait a minute. I just moved it and got it to stop. You think it'll stop forever now? <laughs> yeah, right. Huh. Well, I think I'm gonna put everything back together and I bet I won't even hear that when, when the engine's running. Don't you wish it was this easy to take the dash apart in your car and work on stuff? I don't know. For some reason, they've decided to make it supremely complex to take the dash apart on passenger vehicles. Although I've noticed that on my Dodge pickup out there, Mother Nature has taken the dash apart for me. I don't even have to do it. The problem with that is putting it back together. Probably should let this truck run a little bit more while I'm putting everything back together.
it pays to stay on top of all those silly little things that break that you don't think are very important because a big pile of those can end up being a big thing eventually if you stay on top of it and fix things as they come up it's not nearly as big of a deal i hope you enjoyed today's video thanks for hanging out with me i'll see you next week